Moin everyone, here from Marrakesh in Morocco. This is going to be our first time in Morocco, never been here before. And we actually arrived here at 2 a.m. this morning, so we didn't really see any of the place. We're on the rooftop of the Riyadh that we're staying in, called Riyadh Alamin. Riyadh, I think, are like kind of houses or palaces that have like a courtyard in the middle. We're staying on the bottom floor. We get some pretty cool views here of the Medina. We're in the old town. We always like staying in the historical places. And yeah, just everything looks beautiful here. Some nice hangout spots. So since we arrived at 2 a.m., we got up pretty late at like 12 o'clock. So we thought we'd miss the breakfast that's included. But they still have it here for us. So we've got some traditional bread, I guess. Looks like there's some sort of seeds in there. Some yogurt juice, loads of different spreads. So I'll give you the quick room tour as usual. It's really nice on the inside, kind of a similar decoration to what we showed outside. So yeah, you have like the nice paintings, the beautiful rugs, and there's no door on the toilet. You just have this like big curtain to close it off. Yeah, but not a bad place at all. I like the doorway too. It's like a big doorway and then you have these two little ones. And this is the courtyard area. Cats knocked out. Yeah, so just like above, just some cool areas where you can hang out. Really nice style. So now we're gonna explore the Medina area. So as I mentioned before, we arrived here at 2 a.m. in the morning, and somehow we found the place that we were staying. The address on Google Maps is completely wrong. But yeah, it wasn't too bad. And since we arrived at 2 a.m., there was pretty much nobody in the streets at all. But it was all lit up, so we could walk around quite easy. But yeah, we were like in the, the back alleys. So it's really nice because we're near the central areas, but it's very quiet in the part that we are in these back alleys. And this is where the lively part begins. So all this was closed off yesterday, all shut. That's funny, Carol, you wouldn't even uh, imagine that it would look like this from what we saw oh, okay, in the morning. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> More beeping. Yeah, so it's kind of funny that just a one minute walk from our place, you get this straight away. More beeping. So I think first we're gonna enter the the souk area, which I guess is this place here, indoor souk. The guy at our hotel said that we're gonna, we're gonna see more tourists than locals. Oh, those like chickens. Souk sebagini. Not sure how you say that. Before we continue with our day, we're going to talk about the sponsor of this video, Surfshark, which is our recommended VPN provider that we've been using for almost three years now. If you are a digital nomad or a traveler like us, you know how risky it can be to frequently use public Wi-Fi. But Surfshark allows us to have a private connection, keeping our personal information and sensitive data safe from potential hackers. Using Surfshark also allows us to access all Netflix libraries. Depending on the country that we are in, we might only have access to limited series and films. But with Surfshark we can set our device to any location and watch all the Netflix titles that we want. 
Besides that, we also use Surfshark to bypass internet restrictions and unlock web pages while visiting countries that block specific websites. With just one single Surfshark subscription, you can connect to unlimited devices for your entire household. Click on the link in the video description which has the discount code Jumping Places to get 3 months for free and that also includes a 30 day money back guarantee. And we were actually wondering what to expect here in the Medina because when you see online a lot of people don't really like it because they say you get in approached all the time, people hassling you. So far nobody's talking to us though, but I don't know if that's because I have the, the camera out. I know in Egypt when I film with the camera nobody would approach us. And then when I turn it off, people would be yeah talking to us all the time, trying to sell stuff. That's the the way. That's the way to not get hassled. Yeah, maybe. Pretend you're filming. <laughs> yeah, really cool suit though. Pretty laid back. Oh, check out the golden lanterns, lamps. The beautiful plates too. Now oh, let's go down this way. Little alleyway. Yeah, the guy at our hotel said it's very easy to get lost in these souks down the little pathways. that indoor souk back there. Now we're outside. We're gonna head to the main square. We need to actually get money. We don't have any money, do we? Yeah, we don't have. I, I actually wanted to buy a scarf or something like that, but we don't have money. <laughs> so first to go to the ATM and then maybe later on I can find a, a beautiful scarf for me. Like a head scarf or something? Yeah. Yeah, we also need to get a SIM card too. Carol usually always gets the local SIM card. I have like a T-Mobile international plan since the days when I lived in uh, Houston. I still have the same plan. Pretty good, it's just like 2G speeds though, not very fast. So when Carol gets the local ones, it's usually a lot easier to search things when we're out and about exploring. So this square is called Gemma El Fana. Don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Hello. <laughs> Looks like uh, fruit juice places. They're very popular here. You can see them all over the place. Big square. Apparently this place comes more to life at night. So we'll be filming it at night as well. People bring food stalls. You can already hear the snake charming music. Yeah, but we don't want to get too close to them. Because apparently if you take pictures or film, they're going to ask for money. money and like a lot of money, I think. I like the sound of that though. What is that though? Is it like a, a flute? I don't know. <laughs> I think they have a proper name for it, but I don't know how it's called. Yeah, and the bank that we want to go to is right there. Apparently it doesn't charge you any fees. It sounds more cha chaotic than it is. <laughs> yeah, just a mess of uh, many different people doing the same sound, so it's a bit confusing to understand. Yeah.
So that ended up being more of a mission than we expected just to get the money out. The bank that doesn't charge, none of the ATMs had money. So we went to like four of their ATMs and yeah, they were all out of money it seemed. But we went to another bank, I'll, I'll show the name of it because I don't know how you pronounce it. And we were able to get how much? Uh, 7,000 dirhams and uh, the, the rate, the fee was uh, 35 dirhams. Which, yeah, it's, it's not ideal because we knew that there was an option with no fee, but it's still, it's not, still a lot. Okay. not a lot, yeah. Yeah, so that's fine. Yeah, I'm definitely surprised by how chilled it's been with the vendors so far though. Like from videos that I saw on blogs, I just thought it was super hectic and people would just be hassling us the whole time. But I don't think a single person's approached us yet in the street. We've been here like two hours in the main tourist areas. Nobody's bothered us at all. And around the square you have many cool options of places to eat and drink. We actually want to try some of the famous Moroccan tea. I don't know if we're going to go to one of the restaurants with the views or we'll just try it in the square. Be cheaper in the square probably. So we found a pretty cool spot here. Loving the, the colors right near the end of the square, so a bit less hectic here, but a good uh, people watching spot. We were thinking of going to that one too, another cool cafe, but we chose this one here. Cool menu too. I don't know if that's the name, Akko, and the famous mint tea is 18 dirhams. Are you gonna go for the mint tea too? Yeah. So we're not gonna eat here since we had that really late breakfast but I might as well show you some of the prices. So the international dishes, most expensive one, salmon fillet, 220 uh, dirham. And the cheapest, chicken supreme, whatever that is, 130. And then you have the couscous, which I think is a traditional Moroccan dish. Royal couscous, 160. And a vegetarian couscous, the cheapest one, 80 dirham. You get some chicken skewers, 120 dirham kebab 140 but yeah these will be more like uh, tourist prices probably get it a lot cheaper in local places away from the tourist section so the tea has arrived i'm loving this it looks like a, a genie bottle <laughs> yeah it's very fancy yeah it is fancy really nice got the sugar cubes i'll probably have it pure and with sugar so look at how much mint there is inside i didn't, I didn't realize they put that much mint in there look at that all right, cheers. Ow. <laughs> yeah, the glass is kind of hot. Yeah, definitely a strong mint taste. Not super strong though. No, it's very good. I love it. And I think I, I don't need sugar on it. I like it without sugar. Yeah, so it is a green tea that they mix with the mint, I think. That's why it's quite clear. Let's get a, a sugar in there. Yeah, I think it's even more delicious with the sugar. Very sweet though. I mean, those those sugar cubes are a lot of sugar. Probably too much. You want to try it with the sugar? Yeah, it makes it a completely different taste. It's good, but I think I'll, I'll stick with the no, not sugar one because it's healthier. Yeah, that is too much sugar. So I think we're going to be drinking this tea every day now. <laughs> just walked out of the Medina area quickly very close to the entrance though we just came here to get the sim card so the company we're using is Maroc Telecom but I think it's only gonna work tomorrow for some reason yeah uh, I think it's better if you buy the sim card at the airport because uh, apparently it's uh, for free and here we had to pay 20 for the sim card plus uh, 50 for the, the package the package so it's cheaper in the airport but when we arrived uh, the store was already closed so we couldn't buy it there 
Yeah, because we arrived like after midnight, so it was closed. So 70 dirham overall, that's for 7.5 gigabytes. And I think it works for two weeks. And we're gonna be here for three weeks. So after that, I think we have to buy another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. And right next to the SIM card store, we have the famous mosque here. That is called Kutubia. Once again, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Nice laid back park too, right next to it. So this mosque was built in the 1100s. Seemed to be doing some reconstruction. I think it got damaged in an earthquake. I saw that online. It seems like there's some sort of base of a building here. I don't know if these were pillars and the mosque was a lot bigger. You can't go inside it though. Just gotta look at it from the outside. And the Medina where we were before was only founded in the 11th century. So just shortly before this was built. And at that time, I think pretty much everyone would have lived within the walls, the city walls. So we're gonna head back into the souks now. See if we can find some sort of scarf for Carol. Now that we have some money. Are these already the scarves? Yeah, but I, I don't want like heavy ones. That one says four euro already the price. Can't get scammed if they've already ridden the price. Yeah, we have no idea how much things should be, but probably don't want to spend more than five euros on a scarf. So we'll shoot for five euros max, I guess. Especially since the sign back there already said four euros. This might actually be the biggest Medina that we've ever been to though. I mean, we had like a little Middle Eastern trip two years ago, went to a bunch of countries. I don't remember being in one this big. Definitely quite a lot busier this one than the one in the morning. Seems to be more food places too, food and drink. It smells so good. Yeah, it really smells great. I don't know what that is. So I didn't mention, but the people here mainly speak Arabic and uh, French since they were colonized by the French and the Arabs also conquered here many, many years ago. But some people do speak a bit of English as well. Not everyone though. No nuts? No. No? I eat a bit of chicken or coffee in my Name Samusa. Samusa? Yeah. Very good. Coffee inside or no? No. no. Ah, with in coffee. With coffee. I eat a bit of chicken or coffee with coffee. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, good. Name Oriba. 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 So, how much is like each one is different four price? Gram, four gram. Into one kilo, into one fifty for one kilo. Mm, okay. One kilo, one fifty. Well, one kilo is too much. Two chibu, you have two, okay. Two, two, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But this What's is your name? This, uh, Chris. Oh, Chris. Chris. Oh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Chilla good. Chilla it's part No nuts. No. No nuts. No, no. It's good. Number one. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. And put in the bone. That is chocolate. It's good. Okay, okay, finish. Okay. The count gadget is good. Tomorrow, no, 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 it's okay. <laughs> okay. A lot. So we just bought a, a very big box of uh, candies or sweets. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I think around $10 overall. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna eat everything because it's too much and we don't have a, much time here. But a lot of sugar. Yeah, a lot of sugar, but the one that I tried was really tasty.
I like how you can just go down the little side streets, kind of like the area that we were staying in before, and everything just becomes completely empty and quiet. Somebody's fed the cats here, some of the food leftovers. Hey guys. Nice little local doorway here. You see a lot of doorways like this, all different designs and styles. I think these are a bit lighter. Lighter? Yeah. So the guy said 70, but I asked if he could do 50, which would be 5 euros like we said we wanted. And yeah, you're gonna go for it then? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know which color, this one or this one. I'm mm, not sure. Maybe that brown one. Brown? I don't know, they're both nice. <laughs> Brown's like almost what you're wearing now. Yeah, we'll get the brown one. The brown one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this area that we're in now actually seems a bit more local. Don't really see any tourists around this part. I like the traditional clothing that you see the locals wearing like this guy too. Some cool artwork here. The Atlas Mountains. Yeah, maybe it is the Atlas Mountains. We should be seeing those closer up. And now we're just gonna walk around the Medina with no objective really. I read online that that's one of the best things to do here. Just get lost in the maze, look around, taking all the sights, the interesting buildings, never know what's around the corner. the next morning now and we've come to one of the main sites to see in the old Medina called Bahia Palace a palace from the 1800s and it was 70 dirham per person to enter that's if you're a foreigner so a lot cheaper if you're from Morocco it says that the first foundation of Bahia Palace was set in 1866 by Whoa, look at the size of that name. Abu Imra Musa bin Ahmed bin Mubarak al Sharki al Bukhari. <laughs> That's the biggest name ever. <laughs> and that guy was the Chamberlain Minister and Grand Vizier for the Sultan's Sidi Mohammed bin Abba. I can't even say these names. Yeah, some Sultans. <laughs> so, this is the main reason that we wanted to come here to see the beautiful Moroccan architecture the courtyards. I read that there's around 150 to 160 rooms in the palace so yeah probably a lot to explore. I don't know if you can go in all of those places though. I always love the Islamic style architecture though. Some of the best we've ever seen in the world. Another extremely beautiful courtyard here. Always have the fountains in the middle. I also like how uh, symmetrical everything is, the patterns and designs. So I'm not entirely sure what the correct term is, if you call it like North African, Middle Eastern art, architecture, or Islamic art and architecture. Either way, it's the similar kind that you see in this region. So this was the part that we see mainly in the pictures, the marble courtyard. During the French colonial period, this was turned into the residence of one of the French generals. So within the Medina, there's quite a few places that you can visit, that you have to pay to visit to see the architecture like this, old buildings. 
There's many that are a lot older than this even. I think there's some from like the 16th century. But well, this is supposed to be one of the most impressive ones. So these ones it says to, to touch them. So you're allowed to touch these ones. Okay, this one's carved and this one's wood. That's how. So just outside the Bahia Palace is the Jewish quarter, the old Jewish quarter. Slightly different to the other places that we've been to in the Medina. Seems to be more spicy here, so it smells great. It smells a lot nicer than the other places that we've been so far. Hello. Pretty interesting designs on these buildings too. Buildings are slightly different. There is a synagogue I think you can visit here if you want. Really, really does smell great though. So we come back to the main square now, Gemma El Fana. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they set up all these stalls that are not here during the day, mainly for food. So you still have all the juice ones. It's got a show going on here. Man, it's way busier. Yeah, it's like a different place. Everybody comes out at night. Looks like we got some games too. Fishing. What do you think they gotta do? Put the ring around the, the lid? Yeah, and just get the, the bottle somehow, but it, it seems very difficult. Yeah, this might be one of the liveliest squares that I've ever seen at night. Wow, look at all the steam coming off the, the places. The prayer going on too. Everything going on. Oh, thank you. But you look skinny like Lamborghini. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, the different people trying to get us to eat. I think we are going to eat around here though, aren't we? Yeah, but I want to look at the food first and then make uh, make a decision. But yeah. they don't let you do that. <laughs> if, you, if you look a little bit, they just come to you and talk to you and don't let you leave. <laughs> Later. Okay, pay me now. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so this has definitely been the most intense place in Marrakesh because of the amount of people that approach you trying to get you in the food stalls. Pretty funny though. I think we're gonna try the tagine, whatever you call it. Yeah, I think you're having the tagine, and I'll have the couscous uh, with the vegetables. Vegetarian one. Yeah. yeah. I think mine's 50 dirhams, and what's yours? 40. 40. Yeah, it's not too bad the price. Once again they have the, the bread. Got this dip too. I don't know if this is included or if we have to pay. They have it for everyone though. God. I'm glad I didn't eat the whole thing because it's so spicy. It's like really spicy. I guess that's peppers those bits. The food is looking extra good. Mine was in like some sort of clay pot. There was a lid. He removed it. I should have I should have filmed it. Almost looks like a bit of a stew or soup. Yeah, I think it is kind of that. Yeah, and then there's Carol's couscous. I was just searching if that's a grain. It says that it's technically more like a pasta. It's made out of flour. We've eaten couscous before though, in yeah. other countries. Yeah, yeah. So not my first time, but anyway, I like it already. Yeah, mine is a bit uh, plain. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's not my favorite couscous I've ever had, but it's good. Not much flavor. Not much flavor, but... Mine might be a bit hot still. 
No, mine's great. Yeah. Mine has a lot of flavor. Oh, good. The meat, anyway. Yeah, they had many, many different options for this dish. They had like chicken and even shrimp and other stuff yeah. for the tagine. So Carol was still a bit hungry, so we ordered some more things. We got some olives, those were 10 dirhams, and a soup. Yeah, so I love the soup. Uh, it has some kind of beans. I see the like chickpeas and lentils, but also pasta. Little spaghetti. bits of pasta. Yeah? Little bits of pasta. Yeah, like spaghetti and a tomato -y, uh, sauce. It tastes pretty much like tomato. Better than the couscous. I put the couscous in my little pot here, absorb the taste from the stew, make it tastier. And we also got some mint tea again, but this is just included, so it's free with the meal. Nice way to finish a meal. back at the hotel now just an update about the sim card that we got yesterday it's still not working so it's been over 24 hours and it doesn't work carol followed all the rules that the guy gave it was mainly just to send like an activation code through a text message and there's also a number that you can call to check your credit and it says that the credit's there and that the card is active but it's just not working, so we'll keep you updated on that in the next video. And overall, we've really loved our time here in Marrakesh. It definitely went a lot smoother than what we was expecting, right? Yeah, because uh, to be honest, uh, I was kind of avoiding this trip. We were thinking of maybe coming here uh, last year, but I think I was kind of avoiding it because of the stories that we usually listen about Marrakesh. But it was a lot better than I expected. And I'm happy because of that, because uh, when we went to Egypt and India, we had a few like not so funny stories with uh, a lot of uh, hustlers and people trying to scam you all the time. And I think somebody told us that Marrakesh was even worse than Egypt. So we were like, oh. <laughs> well, we're happy that that wasn't the truth, uh, at least for us. We had a good experience here. Uh, we still had some encounters with uh, people trying to scam us, but we knew of uh, the type of scams that they were trying to 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 give us, and we just uh, said no, and it was fine. It was better than we expected. Yeah. So the main common ones uh, when you go in around in the Medina, some people say like, "Oh, the road is closed ahead," and then they'll tell you that they're gonna show you the detour, and then if you go on the detour with them then they last for a lot of money. I mean, I've seen videos where they ask for like 40, 50 euros. Even the owner here said that if you go with any of those guys, that's usually what they charge like 40, 50 euros. And they might just walk with you for like five minutes. However, the majority of the time the road isn't closed. So a guy said that to us and we continued on and it wasn't closed at all. And you also have quite a lot that ask if you're lost and they're gonna do the same thing again. If you say yes and you're looking for something, They'll guide you there, but then they're gonna charge you a lot. So yeah, you just gotta watch out for that. Probably about two or three times. Some people said those kind of things to us. So that's also the reason that it went smooth because we knew to not uh, follow any of the people here. The owner of the hotel said that if you need any help for directions, just go into the stores and ask the shopkeeper because they're not gonna leave the store, right? They'll just tell you the directions. So. Yeah, do that instead. The only bad thing about that though is you end up kind of ignoring anybody that approaches you. But I think in a touristy place like this, that's just what you gotta do because yeah, some of them are gonna be scammers. Quite a few tourist places in the in the world it's like that though, unfortunately. And in the next video, we're planning on doing a day trip here from Marrakesh to a beautiful waterfall that's not too far from here, so stay tuned for that. If you like this video, drop a like as usual to support us. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll see you in the next one.